How to take pictures of soccer. What we will cover. Planning. Game time. Gear and exposure. How. Where to shoot from. Shot plan. Sample pictures. Problems and tips. Planning. Game time for soccer. At my school and sports district, the soccer schedule is the opposite of football, and that has confused many people. Standard game times, varsity, 4.30 in the afternoon. It is, varsity is not a night game for soccer. However, even though it's an afternoon game, the sun sets earlier in the winter. So halfway through your varsity game, you're effectively playing at night because the sun's down and you're playing under lights. Junior varsity, 6 o'clock p.m. at night. Boys freshmen, afternoon, night, or Saturday. Gear and exposure, day game. Camera, most any camera you have. Lens, Depends where you are shooting from. On the field, 18 to 140, 18 to 400, or 70 to 300. From on top of the bleachers, 18 to 400, 100 to 400, or 150 to 600. Exposure, mode S or TV, shutter priority. 1 1600 of a second, ISO auto. Night game. Please see the video, How to Take Pictures at Night Games. Camera. You need a camera with a high ISO of 25,600 or more. Lens. 70 to 200, 2.8. Or 70 to 204 if your stadium has enough light. Exposure. Mode S or TV, which is shutter priority. One one thousandth of a second, ISO, auto. Or mode M, manual. One one thousandth of a second, aperture, wide open, ISO, auto. Shutter speed, no slower than one five hundredth of a second. Other gear, monopod for the heavy lens. That 70 to 200, 2.8 is a heavy lens. And so is the 150 to 600. Exposure. Always test your exposure before the game and make any needed adjustments. As the sun sets and the light changes, test your exposure again. Adjust if needed. How? Where to shoot from? On the field and at the top of the bleachers. Please see the video, How to Take Pictures in the High School Stadium. Lighting. In the afternoon, shoot with the sun to your back, not towards the sun. At night, near the goal, there is less light than in the center. Once the sun goes down, shooting from behind the goal line can put the faces in deep shadow. Field Position Planning by quarter. This is for the afternoon game. In the picture you see in front of you, north end of the field is to your left. West is to the bottom. So the sun is coming out of the northwest side of the northwest corner of the field. Quarter one. I will shoot from the northwest side which is the bottom left-hand blue square and the north end of the field, which are the two greens, the two blue squares on the left side of the field. Quarter two, I will shift to the southwest side, which is the blue square on the bottom right-hand side. Quarter three, sun is down, so I shouldn't have to worry about looking into the sun. I will shoot on the northeast side, and quarter four, I will shift to the southeast side. 
Now, that's for an afternoon game. For an evening game, I don't have to worry about the sun. So I will shoot either from the east side, shooting towards the school, or the west side, shooting towards the benches. The benches. In soccer, the benches are on one side of the field as opposed to football where they are on both sides of the field. So to avoid the players getting in the way of the camera, what I'll sometimes do is shoot from the opposite side of the field. So the benches are on the top of this picture in orange. What I will do is I'll shoot from the bottom side of this picture in the blue square. On the left, I have nobody in front of me. On the right, the only person in front of me is a sideline ref. So I'll stay behind the sideline ref. Watch the sideline refs. You have to watch the individual referees to determine where they run and stay out of their way. Most are on the turf between the yellow line and the track, the red arrow in this picture. Some are on the first lane of the track. I normally keep at least one lane diff between the referee and me. And I recommend you do the same. For example, if the referee is in lane one, I will be no closer than in lane three, leaving lane two as the buffer. But caution, the side referee is sometimes farther from the field than usual, as in this picture. This particular referee is running on the track in lanes one and two, and sometimes he veers out into lane three, which means I am shooting from lane five to avoid the referee running into me. The other position, top of the bleachers. As indicated in this case with the red diamond, so from there, you've got an elevated view of the field, similar to what the spectators can see, but you've got a different view than if you're on the field. From the top of the bleacher, this shot was taken with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera. Note the position there on the, in the field. This is not the far side of the field or the far end of the field. Caution. My normal maximum range for the 70 to 200 millimeter lens is 50 yards. Most of the field is beyond 50 yards from the top of the bleachers. We'll cover this in a later video on shooting in the stadium. Make a shot plan. This is an example. Warm up. Shoot the goalie. This is the time when the goalie is not blocked by other players and you can go onto the field to shoot the goalie at this time although you need to watch out for the other people practicing shoot as many of the team as you can some of the players may not play and this is your only chance to get pictures of them shoot the team presentation shoot the offense Get shots into the net and from the side of the net. Again, get as many shots of as many players as you can. Don't just concentrate on the stars. Get the defense as well as the offense. Goalie. Some teams, they may change the goalie at the half. So if you don't get the goalie during the first half, you may not get any pictures of the goalie of that goalie. Final score and the sportsmanship handshake. Sample pictures. This is a team presentation. Because of the width of that line, I suggest, like in this picture, that you shoot from the side of the the presentation that your team is on. In this case, my team is in the blue, so I'm shooting from that side of the presentation. Various offense pictures.
goal shot, face and no net, or back and net. Picture left, you have her face and the ball from the kick, but you don't have the net. Picture right, you've got the ball and the net, but you can't see his face. These shots are a compromise. It is also is it dependent on where you are versus where the player is. Picture left. She is further out than I am. So I can get her face, but I can't get this net. Picture right. Player is closer to the net than I am. So I can't get his face. I only can get his back, but I can get the net in the picture. It just comes from being soccer being a positional game. And how do you tell? In the case of the picture left, did she make the goal? Take a picture of the scoreboard. That picture on your scoreboard indicates to you that that particular kick made it into the net. And after the goal... The goal celebration. Other shots, such as getting the ball with the head. Timing on this is pretty tough. Shoot a lot of pictures to get just one. So don't worry about missing your shot, missing these shots. Eventually you will get them. This is a numbers game. Get the goalies. Bottom right picture is why I shoot during warm up because there are, you know, as you can see in this picture, there are a lot of players around the goalie. So sometimes you got your shots of the goalie is blocked. Get the final score before they turn the scoreboard off. You'll notice something about this picture at our school or our league the clock will only go down to two minutes. After two minutes, it is not the scorekeeper that's maintaining the clock, but it is the referee who's keeping the clock. So the final time will, all, will never go below two minutes. So when you see the scoreboard hit two minutes, get a shot of it. The presumption is there'll be no score after that. If someone makes a score, Take a picture of the scoreboard right after that shot. So you have the latest score. And again, when you hear the referee blow the whistle for the end of the game, turn to the scoreboard and get a picture of the scoreboard. Problems to watch out for. Lighting. In the afternoon, shoot with the sun at your back, not towards the sun. Next, watch out for the afternoon glare from the sun off the visitor's bleachers on the east side of the field. As shown in the top picture on the right, the sun is reflecting off the bleachers and the camera's meter is going, whoa, too bright. And it darkened the picture so everybody on the field looks dark. At night, near the goal, there is less light than in the center. Once the sun goes down, shooting from behind the goal line, can put the faces in deep shadow, as in picture bottom right, where you can see the dark shadow on their faces. Another problem to watch out for, color. First, the color of the opponent's uniform. Picture left. Look at that picture. Your eye is drawn immediately to the player in red, not to your player in white. When you are playing in a, a team that is wearing a bright color, red, orange, or any other bright color, you want to think about maybe you want to shoot a different game where you're playing an opponent in a darker color. Or rather than you being in white, maybe you should play a game where you're in color and they are in white. For example, in this particular year, home color was white in which that year you would be going to an away game, so you're in color, and that team in red would be in white. Next is the color of the ref shirt. 
picture right. Look how that bright green shirt detracts your eye from the players in the background. This is why you shoot a lot of pictures, so you can edit out these pictures with the referee in the bright shirt. End zone shots. During the day on the left and at night on the right. This is why I abandoned, if you look at the right pan picture, you see the deep shadows on their face. That is why I, I abandoned this particular position when the sun goes down. Picture left, you can still see their faces clearly. You don't have that deep shadow. Tip number one, words of wisdom, light. If your team normally plays at night, if the team plays a day game, shoot it. It is so much easier to shoot when you have plenty of sunlight. And if you have to travel to an away game to get that day game, do it. The end. Please like and subscribe.